population of uh, 100,000, 100 million people, around 2 million to 2.5 of them are serving as the uh, domestic workers. Dito pala na na, okay. Hindi pa yun sa atin sa atin. And uh, which is very important in the sense that yung kasamahan ko, which was uh, came into effect this April 2015, will have a significant uh, impact on all of us. Kasi it introduces uh, certain rights in things na wala dahil sa batas. And some of them, pag hindi natin comply, would make us liable, perhaps even pain. And uh, I know of no better person here in the college to explain to us what we have my thought other than the person that I will be introducing today. She's been teaching labor law for more than 15 years. Before she got here, she was in labor arbiters of NSIC. And she was the previous president of the ASEAN Society of Labor Law. So she's not only a local expert, she's more an internationally recognized expert on labor law. Okay? But more than that, okay, more than that, she's a wonderful, wonderful professor. domestic 
for it remains nightfall, virtually invisible as a form of employment. Domestic work takes place in the home, not alongside co-workers, but in isolation behind closed doors. In the Philippines, an ILO study reveals that domestic work is those an integral and invisible part of Filipino society. The practice of employing domestic help Dr. Luma, this is Dr. Miren Santos from WTL Barrio. The practice of employing domestic health is historically embedded in Filipino culture and continues to be part of everyday life. In the same vein, a local journalist reminds us that, and I quote, for too long, Millions of household workers, mostly females, have been taken for granted. They have barely descended in stature from the days when they have been called a living sadigilid or a living namamahay, depending on their economic status. A living sadigilid, of course, generally refers to a house slave whose rights are severely constricted because they have been ceded to the household by their own families usually in payment of some debt, the doctor who brought deals. And even now, Ma has better control of her case. However, both are open to abuse of many kinds. Next slide, please. Now, let's look at the situation of domestic workers in the Philippines. Let's look at some basic facts and figures. As of 2011, as of last count, there are 2.5 million domestic workers in the Philippines, 97% of whom are women, so just 3% are men. Private households with domestic workers are about 1.93 million. As of 2010, child laborers, meaning Children between the ages of 5 and 14 are about 373,000 in number. The migrant domestic workers, the one who go for offices employment elsewhere abroad, number about 1.9 million. Top five destinations are Hong Kong, Kuwait, Hong Kong, Hong Kong is about 35%, so more than a third of the total domestic workers elsewhere abroad. We have Kuwait, 20%, UAE, 15%, Saudi Arabia, 10%, Qatar, 9%, and discovered elsewhere abroad because we have about, you know, 208 or 209 countries all over the world where we have migrant, Filipino migrant workers. And this 10% of the migrant domestic workers are scattered elsewhere abroad, outside of the countries we have so far mentioned. Now, let's just look at the monthly minimum. Next slide, please. Monthly minimum wage, just to show you how deplorable the situation of my of domestic workers are. Okay, so, person one to RA, 7655 of 1993, you can see there the minimum wage rates for migrant workers and the equivalent in dollars. So as of 1993, okay, minimum wage in MCR is just 800 pesos or 18.40 US dollars. Can you imagine that? Of course, by year 20, 2010, 2011, you can hardly get a domestic worker or a somebody to work for you at the rate of 2,000 in NCR. So we need a tiny mo pero mo, diba? Now, tam batas to bahay 2013. These are the present rates. For Metro Manila is 25, 2 for chartered cities, chaos. Much money in all cities, 2,000, then other chartered cities, first class municipalities, 2,000. 
Lemon Five or other municipalities. Place of employment, where you usually find them, of course, in MCR, because the rate of pay, of course, everybody wants the texting, three parts of the texting generation. Si Ate, si Indai, si Manang, naka text, text na rin, hindi ba? So, 35% MCR. Then, 35.8%, that's another number one, sir, are spread in all other 30 regions, because we have present in how many regions in the country? So, jump it over. Now, I just noted here all the international instruments, the core international human rights instruments or treaties, which the International Labor Organization considered in preparing for the International Convention, which is number one in nine, it's written to four, the need to afford special protection to domestic workers all over the world. So can you have, can you have the next slide, please? So we have also have the International Labor Organization Conventions, which they also considered in arriving at the final copy of the ILO Convention number 189 of 2011. Next slide, please. Now let's take a close look at ILO Convention number 189. As they say, this is the root cause of our problems now. That's the beginning point of the employer. But we will find out that later if this convention truly and in broad problems to our country. So ILO Convention number 189 with the ILO Recommendation number 201. The convention concerns decent work for domestic workers. It was adopted on 16 June 2011 during the 100th session of the International Labor Conference of the ILO. Can you imagine? In the past 100th session, you see how important this sector of workers are, of course. Founded on the fundamental premise that domestic workers are neither, ser neither servants nor members of the family, nor second class workers. Hailed as historic because for the first time, first time, international instruments are applied to an essentially informal segment of the global workforce. Although, of course, improving the working conditions of the domestic workers has been a long standing concern of the ILO, ILO as a matter of fact, since 1936. ILO was founded in 1990, by the way. This international labor standards of global. Minimum labor standards for the next slide, please, for domestic workers provide the basis for improving and living conditions of tens of millions of domestic workers. Can you imagine how many we have scattered all over the globe? Estimated up to 53 million. It could be up to 100 million. Why? Because they're not visible. They're hidden from view. Okay? Performing work that has been undervalued and invisible historically and traditionally done by women. Hence, they have long been excluded from the most traditional labor protections. Next slide, please. Convention 189 guarantees minimum labor protections to domestic workers on par with other categories of workers. What, is, what does this mean? It simply means that you know, they're just like us, office workers and employees. R201, on the other hand, provides practical and useful guidance on how to give effect to the obligations under Convention 189. The goal is decent work for all. Domestic workers are entitled to this work as are all workers. Simply stated, the bottom line is the dignity of labor, including domestic workers, including white collar job workers. Now, next slide, please. Ratified by the Philippines 
on 5 September 2012, Linux only to Uruguay was ratified IOOC 189 on 14 June 2012. So we have it ratified 5 September 2012. This is very significant, by the way. Philippine ratification is highly significant because by its explicit terms, the terms of IOOC 189, it shall come into force 12 months after the date on which the ratifications of two members have been registered to the ILO Director General. Therefore, the IOC 189 will come into force this coming September 12, 2013. Next slide, please. Now, let's look at the basic rights enumerated in the Convention. Look at the pilot request. Okay. So most important is, of course, promotion and protection of the human rights of all domestic workers, respect and protection of fundamental principles and rights at work. Next slide, please. Okay. Effective protection against all forms of abuse. Good afternoon, sir. My boss is here, Dean Magaliona. Sir, did you find him? And of course, my, my husband is here also, Professor Lavita.
worker is any person engaged in domestic work within an employment relationship. Thus, a person who performs domestic work only occasionally or sporadically and not on an occupational basis is not a domestic worker. In other words, you have to make a distinction between sporadic and what? A regular work. Suppose, however, that you know you get and die to wash your clothes twice a week, but on a regular basis, meaning each week. Problema yan. Each week, doing Tuesday and Thursday, but only twice a week. But it's on a regular basis. Shall it fall? Will that situation fall under the law? Now, under the act, a domestic worker is any person engaged in domestic work within an employment relationship, such as but not limited to so there's an immigration, general house help, you add it all around, nursemaid or yaya, cook, gardener, laundry person. Excluded from the coverage will be any person who performs domestic work only occasionally or sporadically, as we mentioned earlier. And take note of this exclusion. Number two, children who are under foster family arrangements and are provided access to education. Next slide, please. Okay. And they, so these are the children who are under foster family arrangements and are provided access to education and given an allowance instead of education. Please take note of the use of and. So they must have access to education and given an allowance. Incidental to education, but on no money for project, etc. Now, next is who may be considered an employer under the Act? The employer refers to any person who engages and controls the services of, the, of a domestic worker and is part of the employment contract. Under ordinary employer-employee relations, of course, the, there, are, there is a so-called fourfold. Yes, the most important being the right to control, which is reserved in favor of the employer would indicate the existence of an employer-employee relationship. Household refers to the immediate members of the family or the occupants of the house that are directly provided <coughs> services by the domestic worker. So this is not limited to immediate members of the family. Anyone who benefits from the services of the domestic worker can be considered as a member of the household as far as our aid. One of these six one is concerned. Next slide, please. Now let's go through this rule, the national laws on house helpers. Please take note the previous to RA one of three six one, and of course, previous to the mandate of ILO six C one eight nine, we refer to our others and Puyas as house helpers, but now they are to be referred to as domestic workers. Let's look at the 1987 constitution. All my students have completely internalized. Article 13, section 3, correct? Article 13, section 3, according to the president of the 1986 Hong Kong. Justice Cecilia Muniz Palma is the heart and soul and spirit of the 1987 Constitution. Why? Because it sets forth therein all the rights and benefits, all the protection that should be afforded to the most vulnerable sectors we have in Philippine society today, the most marginalized, and started off with the workers. In other article 13, section 3, you know, we have the, the mandate okay, for the state to afford full protection <coughs> without any qualification to all workers. Aside from that, 
the state is mandated to guarantee the so-called seven cardinal or primary rights, the right to what? Self-organization, then the right to collective bargaining and negotiations, and then the right to peaceful concerted activities in accordance with law force, including the right to strike, okay? the right to security of tenure, the right to human conditions of work, the right to the living wage, and the right to participate in policy and decision-making processes affecting the rights and benefits in accordance with law. Okay? So please take note of these rights. Okay? Can we take it that on account of ILOC 189, which has been translated into very concrete words in RA number 10361 or the Bakas that all these rights now pertain to the domestic workers. And then I was going to strike. Let's see. Now, next slide please. Labor code, of course. But, um, let me please just, probably not the previous slide. So let's see, Andy, Andy, please. Okay, labor code. Please take note that the provisions of the labor code on house helpers have been completely repealed by RA 10361. So, <laughs> But look this way, because a lot of what you have in the labor code were practically lifted from what we have in the so-called new civil code. Not so new because it took effect August 2, 1950, of course. <laughs> but nevertheless, we still say new civil code. Okay? Now let's go through the rights. Next slide, please. Okay. Please take note of all these rights, which are still in the civil code. RA 10361 in the penultimate paragraph, if I remember it correctly, in the repealing clause, is stated that the provisions of the labor code has been repealed, but all other provisions of law not inconsistent. Hmm? So meaning not inconsistent shall only be then modified. So the civil code provisions are still good too to a certain extent. <coughs> Next slide, please. Now let's look at RA 1361. This is the Domestic, domestic Workers Act, or Batas Kasambakai. It was signed into law on January 18, 2013. So each year we will celebrate January 18 as Kasambakai Day. The signing. It was published on April 15, 2013 in the official official. That's it. So by its explicit terms, it became a full force and effect 15 days after its complete publication. Yeah. So, in this 
sponsorship with Mark Senators Chad and noted that from the line of labor took effect in 1974, that is November 1, 1974, it took Congress 19 years to amend only one provision, which was 1993, which increased the minimum wage of domestic workers with the enactment of RA 7655 in 1993. By the way, aside from increasing the wages, RA 7655 mandated that each domestic worker or house helper who receives an income of at least 1,000 pesos should be registered with the SSS. Okay? And again, it took another 19 years, it was 19, from 1993 to 2013 to provide more benefits and provide more protection to the Samahais. The bill has been languishing in the legislative bill since 1996. When Senator the first part of the Senate bill for house helpers during the 10th Congress for the first national consultation on child domestic workers in the Philippines. They really need a Magna Carta for the Samba House. Let's look at the most common abuse. Exposure to physical, psychological, and sexual abuse. Exposure to harm harmful and bizarre working conditions. Low, unpaid, or delayed wages. Vulnerability to trafficking and death bondage. Long working hours. With no day off. Performing multiple and all around work. Working in isolation without support networks lack of social security of health benefits, and lack of opportunities for education and self-improvement. Now, if you look at this litany of abuses, you wonder why there are still people who people would like to work as house helpers. Like I said at the outset, the reality is we are a very poor country. So we have a lot of teeming millions, we have teeming millions of Filipinos who are practically wallowing in the quagmire of poverty. And therefore, they will be in interested to find work in the world, any work, no matter how young. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. An example of the most the most horrid abuses that we can talk about practically is what happened to Miss Bonita Baran. Everybody knows who Bonita Baran is. Miss Janet of Lalo, Miss Bonita Baran? Yes, ma'am. She was allegedly locked up for about two to three years somewhere there in Apilantito in Visayas Avenue and subjected to all sorts of maltreatment, including the use of, you know, a burning hat, black iron over her face. So now she is, I think, half blind. We don't have a completely blind. And she has filed charges against her employers, the couple. And the cases are now pending before the Kessin City Regional Child Court. Okay, and the cases that have been filed involve uh, serious legal detention. Penalty can go to a minimum of, I think, 30 years. Right, to show a squad. Not to mention <laughs> serious physical injuries, etc., etc. So, do we need the Magna Carta for migrant, for migrant, for domestic workers? Now, policy declarations in the app. Of course, we raise our constitutional, basic constitutional precept that the state strongly affirms labor as a primary social force. I wonder why they dropped the term economic, you know, under Article 18. No, no, Article 2, Section 18. The state affirms labor as a primary social economic force. Tiba? For that reason, the state shall promote their, protect their rights and promote their welfare. So why drop to mommy? I don't really know. I was looking at the legislative proceedings. I couldn't find the answer. Okay? 
So, next slide, please. Now let's look at the rights and privileges. The title of this lecture is you know, focused on Kasambahay rights. Pero paano naman, if you don't even, you know, give even you know, one liner as regards employer rights. These are the rights of the employers. Capital A. To require submission of free employment documents by the Kasambahay, <coughs> like MBI, police, barangay clearance, medical certificate, etc. To recover deployment expenses, to demand replacement, and to terminate employment. Any bento ba I mean, did I formulate the enumeration? No, sir, no, ma'am. I lifted that verbatim from the list of employer rights in the newly formulated IRR. Now, let's go through the domestic workers' rights. The law starts off with the standard of treatment. There is a prohibition against any abuse or physical violence or harassment or any act tending to degrade the dignity of a domestic worker. Pag di na niyo mag-isya ko galit, sabi na lang niyo, ate, muwi ka na. Huwag niyo kahit kurutin, bawal. Nagigigil ka na, ititit mo na lang yung mata mo. Okay, but never, never touch her. The next is guarantee of privacy. Respect for the privacy of the domestic worker at all times. It extends to all forms of communication and personal effects. Employer, for example, cannot try into text messages of the domestic worker, pati yung or even barge at any time into her room. Hindi pwede yan. Yan to not. Um, there is a misplaced provision in this article. It says the, the domestic worker is to render satisfactory service at all times. But come to think of it, after giving it much thought, then it's going to misplace. Probably it's intentional on the part of Congress. Hmm? This is how they satisfy the service. If you keep on, one man, you know, stay in your room, uh, or texting, texting, etc., etc., what will happen to your voluntary obligation to serve your employer? Right? So, not misplaced. Next is access to outside communication. Rule is the right to access to outside communication should be during free time. So, give me a home and gather about a text and text. Inception. In case of emergency, access is granted even during free time. No use of telephone or other communication facilities. Okay? The cost of these are to be borne by the domestic worker. Mag long distance in life, si ate. Unless, of course, we know, ate, ato na, mabaitke. Unless it happens, then she pays. Next, it's right to education and training. This is mandatory. Employers shall afford an opportunity to finish basic education. Under both, you know, the, the, under the old law, Single hmm? code. If I recall correctly, it's only when the law speaks of basic, it simply refers to elementary education. Hindi kasama yung secondary. Pero nang kasama. And when the law says now access, hmm, of course, without hampering the essential services, it may include financial assistance, but at the option of the employer. In other words, hmm, it, it is still what? The, it, the, the cost is to be borne by the domestic worker. So, bad guy, a lot of our you know, schools in the elementary and high school levels are public, and therefore, free, very minimal and cost they can afford. There is also an option for the employer to allow alternative learning systems. Hmm? And as far as practical 
for higher education, kung si ate merong uh, aptitude for college studies, pwede. Uh, and I had a domestic worker who stayed with us from 1995, and she left um, July 28, 2012, so more than 18 years. She, you know, um, went to school and finished a four-year course, and now she's in a registrar's office of a reputable college, and uh, she's doing uh, Avon dealership on the side, and she was able to build and to put out a sari sari store. So she did not, at that point in time, she left, I felt unneeded. <laughs> so, board lodging and medical attendance. Here, yeah, she has the right to be provided with the basic necessities. And the best necessities include three adequate. Adequate, please take note in the rapi 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 down. Three adequate meals a day. And you may receive <coughs> arrangement. Hindi pwede si ate nandun lang sa sofa o nasa kusina lang. And the arrangement should ensure safety. Di ba? Kung meron ka manyakis na kumagakad na lalaki, dapat na sa kwarto si ate. Safety. You're responsible for her safety. Okay? Appropriate rest and assistance in case of illnesses and injury. Ngayon mo na, o, nagpahinga ka, araw na papahinga ka, iluto mo na yung tinunga. Ika dito. Okay? Next, treatment of privileged communication. Again, this is misplaced. The articles and human rights rights and privileges of domestic worker. This section treats all communication and information pertaining to the employer or household members as privileged and confidential. Di ba din sabi ni Ate pag talibod niya si si Mang si Sir ganito ganyan din. Yung anak ganito ganyan ganyan. Such communication and information shall not be publicly disclosed by the domestic worker during and after employment. The rule is privileged that information shall be inadmissible in evidence. Exception. Suit involves the employer or any household member in a crime against the man. In a crime against persons, personal liberty, security and chastity. Practically, the entire revised penal code. So, practically, you know, use my Next slide, please. Employment contract. Before you enter into the employer-employee relationship, there must be an employment contract duly executed by and between the household employer and the domestic worker. So, for this domestic worker, an employer, when to execute before the commencement of the service, in a language understood by both. So, Tagalog, Misaya, whatever. Pero mo siya speaking si Ake. What do you mean? Okay? Sir, may mga English speaking dyan. A copy of the duty signing of one contract must be provided to the domestic worker. Contents. Okay? Please take note that if you look at the enumeration there, everything is in here. This is the form contract prepared by the interagency committee. It includes, it includes everything that I have included here. Okay, duties and responsibilities of the domestic worker. He has a period of employment under the, the old rule. No contract for domestic employment can exceed a two-year period. That is subject to renewal, of course, of an agreement of the parties. Now, compensation, we have to specify authorized deductions, which will be SSS, field health, and public contribution, or the premium payments. If the compensation is the 5000 the employer will shoulder the entire package. So, now, if if you are paying the 
the domestic worker on a model of 5,000 pesos. The total contribution each month will be 689 pesos, okay? Including SSS, kid health, and budget. If the pay is about 5,000 pesos, then the payment will be done, you know, the same, the same way that we did it before, proportionately. Mm -hmm. In accordance with the schedule as provided in the law. Now, hours of work and proportionate additional payment. What does it mean? Nandi, nandi ko eh. Okay, kasaho, dagdaga ng buwan ng kasaho. Dagdag na sa akin kapag lumabas at tinakda ko na sa trabaho. Now, if you look at RA 10361, there is nothing there which would say that the domestic worker is entitled to overtime compensation. But if you look at the formulation, why? Because it is the mandate of ILOC 189. But upon what basis will you be computing the overtime compensation? Suppose that your overtime compensation, your your monthly pay is Thank <laughs> you. 
Tamasi in a professional student. So this was not a bit I've never experienced for him. He has to be more what? Creative, otherwise they all go to sleep. My first experience. <laughs> like breaking students. Breaking students they do this to be late. But no more you can do Now Rest days and our beliefs, more touch, etc. Okay, we'll discuss that later on. Now, the last is next slide, please. Next slide. And to the back. Okay, now, pre employment requirements. Prior to the execution of the employment contract, the employer may report the following from the domestic worker in the mail medical certificate, health certificate, worldwide police clearance. And the clearance birth certificate. Now, for example, we didn't register out there for the simple reason that she does not have a birth certificate or any secondary documents, birth, uh, baptismal certificate. Well, uh, then the end, you inform to the subject of voters identification card. Well, uh, then the end. Passport is not for that. So, well, of course, I brought this up to the attention of the SSF head of legal in the forum yesterday. And he said that he will bring this matter to the concern of the higher ups in SSF because it's really a problem. What if, for instance, the domestic worker is the product of an adulterous relationship? So, a pinido minamet sa stepfather. Eh, ayaw niya, abilito ng stepfather niya. But the while that she was going to school, she was using the name of the stepfather for the simple reason that the stepfather was paying for her whatever tuition fees she would have to pay, etc. But after the split between the mother and the stepfather, she stopped using the stepfather's surname. So, ang gulo, dami dami. So, what do you do? You know? In such a situation, very problematic. So, in one case, as the domestic worker said, ayoko ko mo mag-register ng society niya kasi iba-ibang tao yung pangalan mo. Ibang-ibang or not? Totoo yun. Now, because she'll be born by the prospective employer or the, this is the private employment agency. Recruitment and finance fees, in charge the domestic No, regardless of whether the domestic worker was hired through a VA or a third party. Now let's look at the prohibitions. Prohibitions are important, especially if the law itself explicitly declares such an act to be penal in nature. In other words, the employer, any person violating, may go to prison for that. First, the costs for loss or damage. The law says that it is unlawful. Next slide, please. Next, please. Okay. Unlawful for the employer or any person to require a domestic worker to make deposits from which deduction shall be made for the reimbursement of loss or damage to tools, materials, furniture, and equipment in the household. So, nakabasag ng porcelain. Okay, let's see what you want to do with the porcelain. Direct from Kremlin and direct from Moscow. Death bondage. It is unlawful for the employer or any person acting on behalf of the employer to place a domestic court under death bondage. What is death bondage? The rendering of service by the domestic worker as security or payment for a debt is still happening, I tell you, in the bundles. Meron pa rin. Where the length and nature of services is not clearly defined. So, tabaw ng tabaw si Ate, wala siyang kinikita. Or the value of the service is not applied in the debt payment. Employment as a domestic worker of any person below 50, ito yung mga prohibited, ha? Debt bondage, employment of a person below 15 years of age, please take note of na. It is declared unlawful. If, wala mo ka, eh, 
for the tourists to have the right to um, aggregate. Please take note, aggregate daily rest period of eight hours per day. So that you can have two hours in the afternoon and six hours in the evening. It's an aggregate. But the question here is, uh, problema naman to. Uh, what about the remaining 16 hours? Does it mean that she is to work for a total of 16 hours? Because ang aggregate rest period niya lang is 16 hours. Of course, I don't think that is the intention. But some employers may use this. Sabi ng batas, 8 hours ng pregnant. Not about after 16 hours. So that's very good. And I don't think that is the intention. That's why the civil code provision, okay, on the mother is still important. 10 hours, so you're so grand, hindi kayo magkakamali pa ng 10 hours. Now, aside from that, they now have weekly rest period. That is meron eh, once a week. So, they have at least 24 consecutive hours of rest per week. Consecutive, ha? When the law says consecutive, it simply means that. But the problem is, uh, there are your companies from God, the Sudastas down. No, the employer and domestic workers shall be in writing on the schedule of the weekly rest period. Na dito, exceptions. The employer shall respect the domestic workers' preference and based on religious grounds. Catholic ako eh, ate. Catholic. Prefer to go Saturday, Protestant, and Sunday. Protestant Sunday. Iglesia ako ate. Thursday. So, but this does not go. That should be respected. The dito pag yun, the employer na agree on the following. Please, scroll down. Okay, here. Of setting a day of absence to the particular rest day. Waiting a particular rest day in return for a work for an equivalent day in the rate of pay. Bayagan mo. You want to work on your rest day, bayagan mo. Accumulating rest days, not exceeding five days. This is this will this can be the service incentive for pay. And other similar arrangements. <coughs> Can you assign the domestic worker to work for your really beloved mother? Oh, bakit? Nanay ko yan. The domestic worker and the employer may mutually agree for the domestic worker to temporarily perform a task that is outside the latter's household for the benefit of another household. Ang consequences will be any liability that will be incurred by the domestic worker and account of that arrangement shall be borne by the original employer. Nakabasa. <coughs> Nasira yung washing machine. Ito ang kayo. Set for the title of the video that you want. Additional payment. Additional, yung sweldo na sa akin. That's what the law says. Additional. <coughs> which should not be not less than her existing minimum wage. <coughs> As a matter of fact, the law says it is unlawful for the original PR to charge an income from the said okay, the other household <coughs> where, is, where she is temporarily doing service. Now, scroll up, please. And then, minimum wage. Now, this is the new rates, but please expect that at the end of the year, the original tripartite wage and productivity boards in each of the 17 regions we present uh, would have to look up the rates. So, by the mass after one year. Okay? Next slide, please. Of course, this is one of the more significant developments. We now have to pay the 13th month pay to our domestic workers. Of course, if you hire here middle of the year, it's proportionately done. So six months, 
just only 50% of the one, one twelve of her what? Basic pay for 12 months. You know, it's a concerted money pay. Now, when are we supposed to um, scroll up, please? When are we supposed to pay the wages? On time. If you agree on every 15, every 30, hmm, you have to follow what is in the contract. At least once a month. You can do it twice a month, of course, if she wants it. And you have to pay it directly to the domestic worker to whom it is due, who performed the services. There was a time when uh, we had domestic workers coming from the provinces. And the mother would go to the ranch, my husband's mother, and get the pay. It was really terrible because it demoralized the, the daughters. Pay sleep. In other words, you can pay for it. Now, the law also requires that we should have a pay slip. Right? Let me form for the pay slip. Not it down, but you do it. You should have two copies because you have to give her one copy of the pay slip. You decide by the both of you. So for each month, square will you indicate the period, the amount received, if any deduction for each task. Uh, she was receiving more than 5000 therefore it's paid for her SSS in help of it, then indicate in the base kit. Now, wage prohibitions. Next slide, please. Prohibition against assignment to non-household work at lower wage rate. This was lifted verbatim from the old provision in the labor code and also in the civil code. So, although, you know, th this particular provision does not explicitly declare the act as unlawful, and therefore it's not penal in nature. But no domestic worker shall be assigned to work in a commercial, industrial, or agricultural enterprise at a wage rate lower than that provided for agricultural or non-agricultural workers. In such cases, the DW shall be paid the applicable minimum wage. Prohibition on interference in ways is close up. Ito ang mami kasi yung mami and sir pa kayo meron. Ito ka pumili, ito ang pili mo, ito ang self mo na bili mo, etc. etc. You cannot do that. It is unlawful for the employer. It is declared bina to interfere with the freedom of any domestic worker to dispose of wages. And the employer shall not force compel or advise the domestic worker to purchase merchandise, etc. From the employer, from any other person, siyang ka sa ating sabi-sabi store para naman maumbos yung tinda na. Hindi pwede. Colgate mo, dyan, dyan, etc. By the way, yung bang colgate, sabon, shampoo, kasama sa essential, sa necessity. Hindi naman. Pero mabait kayo, hindi naman yan. Pwede ba siyang mag-asin? Benefits. 
they now have an animal service incentive leave of five days with pay. This is granted to a domestic worker who has rendered at least one year of service, and a new portion of the annual leave shall not be cumulative or carried over to the subsidy years, nor convertible to cash. You have to inform your domestic worker, by the way. Kasi lang cumulative. Ko naman ito yung meta. Social and other benefits. If you have at least one month of service, you have to be covered by the SSS, Field Hill, and also the Home Development Mutual Fund. They are entitled to all the benefits provided by law, also all other benefits under existing laws. So, sa SSS, by virtue of your R8 model case 61, the domestic worker now will have a retirement pension. Of course, may mga minimum contribution requirement yan, 120 for retirement pension. Ha? They will have disability pension. They will have sickness benefits, maternity benefits, hmm? death pension, funeral, 20,000, <coughs> dependents pension, and imagine up to five children, okay, so that's yan. Dependence pension, 10% of the level of the monthly pension, or 250, whichever is higher. But if you that's about 1,250. And employees compensation, work-related death, sickness, injury. Naputo lang ka mga habang nag... Violation of the employee of the firm's 
and conditions of employment, ha? pag sweldo, pag ating mili. Hindi ba kasi dumating yung sustain yung asawa ko? Hindi ba niyo? You have to do your proper budgeting and allocate for a mili. And it is this by the visual to the health of, the, of everyone. Nagka-TV. Kaya ako nagkakapinom para pwede si magluto, diba? Mag-serve. Nagka-TV. Pwede mong paris yan. Ito ang nasa batas. It's a just cause. Termination by the employer. Next slide, please. We have misconduct or willful disobedience by the domestic worker of the local order of the employer in connection to performance work. This is similar to what we have in the old article 282. I think now that the article 295, the number of the labor code. Kaya lang, uh, ito, misconduct lang. No? Uh, with respect to ordinary employees, it's serious misconduct. And I think it's for a good reason. Imagine kasama mo sa bahay. Diba? So just misconduct or willful disobedience. And then the second value cost or just cost is gross or habitual neglect. Under the labor code again, there is a slight variation. So labor code sabi gross and habitual neglect. Huh? So hindi lang gross, meron bang habituality dito? Gross or <coughs> habitual neglect. Like some business lang, basta gross. Sa labor code, it should be for ordinary workers, gross and habitual. Okay? And then fraud or local breach of the trust rules with the employer on the domestic worker. Nang kumpit si Ate. Bilang niya yung pera ko, nagkiwala ka ng sampung piso, na wala yung piso. Diba? That's fraud. It's not, by the way, we know by now that it's not the amount involved which is important, but the act of this honesty. It's the right piece of honesty. So, we should feel like so great when we are done. You know, we need to bring peace in on. I don't know what we are doing. 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 So now we're going to open it now. Commission of a crime or test of domestic worker is the person of the employer or any immediate member of the employer's family. So you can the employer, any other member, in violation of the terms and provisions of employment. This is, again, prejudicial to the health of the domestic worker.
Max, lagi lang po yung pangalan mo at yung pangalan mo yung domestic workers. Sila yung address mo. Yan lang. O po yun lang yung lang ang form. Okay, so it will take you five minutes. So, it's the duty of all domestic workers. Now, DILG and the law are to coordinate and formulate a registration system. Hindi ba yun? Kasi na lang ako. Registration also with the SSS we will help a few years. Now, the law mandates the establishment of a unified system of registration and also the formulation of a master list, database, in other words, which shall include the names of the employers, the addresses, etc. The names, the addresses, even the age, the birthday, birthplace, the what? The educational attainment of the domestic workers. So they are given six days in which to establish that. How do you know? You know, I don't know. We should not do that. But no, they are given six months from the day when the IRR took effect, which is by the court correctly on June 3, 2013. So six months. From June, June 3 will be what? Mr. Odigo. <laughs> December 3. Now, private employment agencies. What is a private employment agency? It's a, it refers to any individual that you can partnership. Corporation or any entity licensed to engage in the recruitment and placement of domestic workers for local employment, he said more. There are regulatory mechanisms that are in place. One, there is a system of licensing and regulation that will ensure the protection of domestic workers hired through the PEAs. The law also establishes joint and several liability uh, or solidarity liability between the PEA and the employer with respect to what? Wages, wage-related benefits, and other benefits due to the domestic worker. And also the law makes applicable on the PEAs the labor code provisions or requirements with respect to nationality. Remember, their POTA rules, the entity should be owned by a Filipino or a corporation or entity at least 75% of the authorized capital of which should be owned and controlled by Filipinos. Okay, all such requirements, including the capitalization requirement of at least 2 million. Now, also, well, I'd like to give the historical and enforcement powers of the Secretary of Labor, which is now provided under Article 128, Article 129 of the Labor Code. Okay, the story of enforcement powers are in place. So, in, under Article 128, the Secretary of Labor or any duly authorized and uh, official of the Department of Labor and Employment has access to a technical to the employer's records okay, and premises at any time of the day or night while work therein is being performed. And the right to copy, uh, to question, investigate any fact, condition matter, to determine any violation of the provisions of the code or any other special law. So that means that the Secretary of Labor may visit us in our homes. They have to look at this because it's in the law. Okay? And of course, there's a problem in monitoring compliance. If there is no monitoring system that will be established, I don't think that the domestic workers, majority, or substantially, a substantial portion of our mother for this activities would ever enjoy whatever rights have been established in RA 103 
one. Information dissemination program, of course, it is the duty of the board for information with the ILG, SSS, Field Health, and Pagini to develop and implement a continuous information dissemination program. And then, next slide, please. What happens if